Hello. How is everybody? You doing all right? You ready for the spoops? I sure am. I want to thank everybody for being here. I want to thank everybody for making the time to join me on this new spoopy adventure. Big shouts to those of you who are here, especially if you managed to be here for the first spoopy adventure back when we played Little Nightmares 1 uh, over on Cardinal Casual over on YouTube. Uh, I hear a lot of good things about this game. I'm really excited. I want to say big thanks, by the way, to Beachon. I saw you resubscribed. I appreciate you. How am I? I am ready to be scared, and I hope y'all are too, because this gonna be, this gonna be good. Oh, I love that music. It's so, it's exactly like the first one, and the first one was a masterpiece. Can't wait. Let's dive right into it. Big thanks again to everybody for being here. I appreciate no spoilers in the chat. And even like, this next scene is great. Or I wonder how he's going to react to this next part. That's a spoiler. And Daniel has been given full permission to give full boots for anything even moderately spoilery. He knows I don't play with that shit. Scary door. Oh, interesting. I'm not playing as the girl from part one. I'm playing as Mr. Baghead. Mr. Headbag. Mr. Headbag goes to the left and finds that he can no longer proceed. Mr. Headbag returns where he was gets the yellow thing he gets the picks up the yellow thing and the yellow thing is his new friend come Mr. Headbag we've adventure to experience adventure in the scary forest what will Mr. Headbag and Little Brick Experience together. Let us find out. Does Mr. Headbag remember how to throw? That's crouch. That's something else. Throw. Throw. Yes. Very good, Mr. Headbag. Mr. Headbag, are you ready to run? Is there a run button? Yes, there is. Come, Mr. Headbag. We jump! Very good, Mr. Headbag. Gather your friend. Look, Mr. Headbag. A grill. Let us open it. We need to simply open it like that. And we and Little Brick can enter like so. Worry not, Mr. Headback. When accompanied by Little Brick, you've nothing to fear. Nothing can harm you here. Not even the owner of that mysterious shoe. Oh, my. It looks like they have no need for it now. Mr. Headback, have you given up on Little Brick so quickly? Would you like to pre replace Little Brick with Red Shoe? What saith the audience? Who shall be Mr. Headbag's friend? Shall it be Red Shoe or Little Brick? Mm -hmm. Good. The audience has built an attachment to Little Brick. That serves well for the narrator who will use it against them in the future. Climbing we shall go.
do it for a little break. Yes, good. Come, little brick. You must away from the bag of children. Onward across creepy flog. Let's go, little brick. Oh, it's a good thing I have you, little brick. Without you, this forest would seem rather scary, said Mr. Headback to no one. As Little Brick was not alive and incapable of response. Little Brick, must you be so stubborn? Yes, let us proceed together as friends. Oh, that does not seem safe to step upon, thought Mr. Headbag, and he was right. But when he looked upon the ground... Luckily, Little Brick was there to save him, and said, Watch out, Mr. Headbag. I will handle this nefarious trap. I believe that is another nefarious trap. Shall we find out, Mr. Little Brick? We shall. Farewell, Mr. Little Brick. Your sacrifice will not be in vain. Thank you forever for what you have contributed to my safety. Goodbye forever. You are now die. Mr. Headbag knew better than to make such quick and easy loyalties in such a dangerous world. It did not do to make such tight connections with things they've just met, especially inanimate objects. Thus he felt nothing at the loss of Little Brick. Run, 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 run. run. Hmm. Can one... No. One cannot. Come along, Mr. Headbag. There's nothing to see up there. Nothing but mystery and... Malice. the log, Mr. Headbag. Use the noose like a fun swinging rope. How fun is that? Just lower the box of bodies. Excellent. Now you have a platform with which to cross the gap. Onward through the forest, Mr. Headbag groaned, knowing full well the dangers of height. Hmm. Why? Oh, there was a rope. Okay. Very good. Mr. Headbag safely climbed up the fallen ladder. Ooh, yum yums. Yum yums indeed. Alice can't draw. To you, I say a very merry thank you for the 110 bits. A hip hip hooray.
Let the death count read one. Ah, a new friend, Blue Shoe. Come, Blue Shoe. We've much to experience together. For example, this. Very good, Blue Shoe. Very good. What a dear friend you have proven to be. Hmm. Meat in a bear trap. Tempting. But luckily, Mr. Headbag was able to ignore his hunger for now. Oh, dearest me. That almost was a tragedy. Mr. Big Stick. Would you kindly handle this for me? Thank you! Farewell, Mr. Big Stick. Oh, another Mr. Big Stick. Come along, Mr. Big Stick. Come along. Oh, how I do not trust this. Delightful. Good. Excellent. Just great. Fantastic. How wonderful life is, now you're in the world. I hope you don't mind, I hope you don't mind, that I put down in words. Ah, how nice. How wonderful. Oh, there you go. Nearly directly to your death. Jump and a grab and a climb. And a jump. Everything's fine, said Mr. Headbag. We're making great progress. Surely things will only continue to get better from here on out. The ominous music agreed. That is when Mr. Headback called upon the help of his new friend Tinkin. T I N C A N. Tinkin. He said to his friend Tinkin, Tinkin, do you think we should enter this house? Tinkin said, Do as you wish. I am but a can. Agreeing, Mr. Headbag threw Tinkin against the wall and proceeded into the house. Just... Oh, my. Mr. Headback quietly proceeded through the house. 
quite positive there were. The house's residents were very present. Headbag said to himself, I'm not sure that I want to be Mr. Headbag. Perhaps I would like to be Mr. Raccoon Hat. In doing so, he revealed he had a face, which greatly bothered the narrator. He said, I shall be Mr. Woodenhead. And yet, despite the novelty of the new items, Mr. Headbag said, Enough of this nonsense. I am Mr. Headbag, and I shall continue to be Mr. Headbag. And Mr. Headbag, he remained. What manner of creature Ooh, is that? Yeah, yeah. Alice can draw once again donated a hundred bits. Hip hip hooray for the bits. Thank you so much for the yum yums, Alice can draw. Onward, Mr. Headbag creeped, approaching the music. Despite his better judgment. Curious. Through the cracks in the wood, Mr. Headback could see that the music was being played by what appeared to be a little child, locked in a room. Not finding any way to immediately free the child, Mr. Headback put down Mr. Rubber Band Ball and decided to see what else he might be able to find in the house. What a pity. You are kidding me. And yet, Mr. Headbag was not joking whatsoever. He'd found the perfect tool with which to free the child. And free the child, he did. Quite violently. Hello, child. I'm here to free you. Fear not the bladed weapon I bring. It is me, Mr. Headbag. Be my friend, he said. Join me now, child. The child crept ever so closer towards Mr. Headbag's exposed hand and instead ran for freedom. Mr. Headbag said, Finally, the music maker is all for me. He threw it with great malice. The child went to Mr. Headback. 
Seeing the, sky, the child scurry upstairs, he quickly made to follow. Child, what are you running from? Oh, oh my. Thank you so much. Oh my god, that is loud. Little B. Mason, thank you so much for the two gift subs. I appreciate you and your kindness and your generosity as loud and sudden as it may have been. The hype train was triggered. And thus, Codlin made haste to make good on his promise to activate the hype train immediately. Choo choo, said the hype train. Choo choo, said Godlin. Need help, mystery child? I'll help you. How'd you even reach that? How, how do I... How do I do the thing you wish me to do? Excellent. Together they managed to raise... Lower the attic. Kata Curtis, thank you so much for the hundred bits. Your yum-yums are deeply appreciated. Mr. Headbag, ecstatic at finding his new friend, led the way into the mysterious attic. Push together, friend. Excellent. We'll need that for later. Oh, that is a foot. Something's a foot. Haha. <laughs> Ooh, yum yums. B Chan. I thank you quite merrily for the hundred bits. Pip pip a cheerio. If only he had some kind of square peg tool. So you could find none. Curious. He wondered if that was what was left behind. In fact, no, it was but another shoe. Ooh, yum yums. Chesapeake Cannibal, thank you so much for the hype train bits. Hype train continues to steadily gain steam. Something for that thing. I open this.
Oh, they were holding hands, and wasn't that adorable? Maybe if we pull on the toe. Come, 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 friend. Hold hands. Yes, yes. Quite, quite. Can we do the jumping trick? I, you jump, and then I jump, and... Oh. Scorpio's lair gave an says this is overwhelmingly cute for a nightmare. To which the narrator responded, "That is overwhelmingly generous for a hype train. Thank you so much, Scorpio's lair. We have now reached level two of the hype train." Could it be? Was Mr. Headbag already stuck at so early a point in the game? Me, oh my, Little B. Mason donated a thousand bits. Little B. Mason said, Oh my god, so excited to be back into Little Nightmare. Part one was so good, all the spooky memories. Little B, thank you quite so many, many, many. What a merry, many thank yous we owe you. Thank you so much for your generosity, bringing us so close to the end of. Something, I'm just not sure. Okay, and I can climb this. What else can I do from here? Nothing. Oh, there you go. Easy as that. Thank you, new friend. As Mr. Headbag approached the quiet room by himself, he decided to wonder if he should figure out a name for his new friend. He found the piece he needed to use the machine, but it was in the hand of what appeared to be a dreaded grown-up. Dare he take it? Ooh, yum yums. He dared. Three hundred more bits from Little B. Mason. Did their generosity know no bounds? Thank you so much, Little B. Mason. Oh, good. Very good. Onward and onward we followed. Thank you so much for the bits and the follows. Job, new friend. Up we go to the key. Nope, not go. There we go. Excellent. Hope shone anew in the eyes of Mr. Headbag and his new. Oh, my. Oh, Kevin. Come, Kevin. Come, Kevin. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Come. Oh. New friend, we must go visit the Kevin. K 
Kevin. Where are you going, Kevin, you silly billy? Onward and onward. Mr. Headbag went in search of his new friend's secret hideout. Oh, Lord, thank you so much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh. MacMac98 was gifted five gift subs. Oh, me, oh, my. Thank you so much, MacMac98. We find ourselves deep in the throes of level three of the hype train. Much thanks to MacMac. Kevin, what are you hiding? You think I don't see hey, you there, thanks. Kevin. You big silly. Little B. Mason has donated another five dollars! Simply saying, just because, in their donation message. Thank you so much, Little B. Mason. Thank you much everyone for all your donations and contributions mr headbag knew he was but moments now from reuniting with his friend kevin kevin i know you're there why must we play these silly games kevin ooh yum yum 200 more bits from Little B. Mason. Their generosity was seemingly endless. Thank you so much, Little B. Mason. Kevin. Honestly, now. Come along, friend. You mustn't hide from me, you little rascal. So close now. Kevin, where are you going? Mr. Headback eagerly followed his friend into the darkness. Where have you brought me to, Kevin? This is quite a curious room. Can I join you up there? It is rather lonely down here, Kevin. You wouldn't leave an old friend in the dark, would you? Jump, Kevin, are you brave? Come along, Kevin. Come along. Wow. Why well, jump when I can bring this to you? There you go. There you go, Kevin. Come along. We've many places to go yet in our puzzle. Kevin, you've led me into your secret hiding place. Uh, Kevin, what does this switch do? Can I go up there to hug you, Kevin? I wish to give you a hug. Several, if I may spare it. Aha. I'll be there in a moment, Kevin. 
Just wait for me. Calmly and quietly. All the while hoping my new friend doesn't tire of waiting for me. Oh, Kevin, I had forgotten my pathway. How could I forget that his name was Francis, not Kevin? What is Kevin from? Oh, oh my, oh no. Kevin Francis, that's his new name. Mr. Headbag was simply calling him by his middle name. For they were so well acquainted. Mr. Headbag was so excited to try out the hat of his new friend, of his old friend, Kevin Francis. Immediately he realized he hated it, and would return once more to being Mr. Headbag. Mr. Headbag found himself reunited with his dear new friend, who had yet to find a name. So we already have the key? Alright, very good. Then let us proceed with the rest of the game, said Mr. Headbag with a slight, sly wink to his audience. Oh my! Mr. Headbag eagerly unlocked the door, took the hand of his friend, and led them into the new room. Out of the house, together! What a joy it was to finally be free of that place! If they could just survive a quick and easy jaunt through the adjourning neighboring shed, why, they'd soon be free. Uh-oh. Mr. Headbag did not like that sound. Not one bit. Peyton Miller donated 100 bits, saying had a pretty bad day today, so the stream gave me something to look forward to. Happy to be part of Peyton Miller's better part of their day. The narrator continued on. Taking the hand of his new friend for courage, Mr. Headbag approached the sound of scraping and tearing. It was there he found it. The first live grown-up he'd seen. The menace was ripping, slicing, but at what? The flies circled. Was that a body? Quietly, Mr. Headbeck and his friend crept, wanting not to disturb the man. Come along, friend. Come along. Come along, friend. Come along. Oh my. Oh me. Oh my. Oh no. Oh my god. And with that, Mr. Headbag found his end with bullets. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh my. No, thank you. 
It's more they heard. No, thank you, they said. Charging through the forest. No, thank you. They couldn't hide here forever, or could they? No, thank you. I'm deciding to join his friend. Together they hid. And the human with the rifle was unable to find them. Knowing this couldn't last forever, Mr. Headbag. Oh, no! No, thank you! Waiting for the human to turn around. Quickly, the two of them ran. No, thank you! Luckily, the grown-up was nearly blind. Could not see what was clearly a headbag sticking out of the grass. friend alas they did a die Take my hand. That is the wrong button. That is why you're not taking my hand. This is the hand. Whoop. Then we release this button and we run. Come, friend. Come, friend. Come, friend. Come, friend. Oh, my. Mr. Headback took the time to distract with himself with how soft and warm his friend's hand felt in his own. Doing his best not to distract himself with such silly thoughts, he focused on the impending murder. That did not work as planned at all.
determining to build up speed, he then back charged with all he had and grabbed upon the hand of his friend. Mr. Headback did his best not to notice the uncanny upskirt shot he simply got he suddenly got of his friend. There are more important things to focus on. You silly man said Mr. Headback to himself, red in the cheeks. Oh, friend. Hold, hand holding. Friend holding hands with friends. Oh, they have been discovered. How fast could Mr. Headbag climb? We'll soon discover if it was fast enough. Climb kindly. Run, 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 run. Oh, good. Mr. Headbag did not appreciate the level of filth that he was forced to endure, but he hurried on nonetheless. Oh my. Mr. Headbag learned he needed to start holding his breath much earlier. Look at that tree. There's a little thingy on it. Me, 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 me. How come I can't up? Me up. to the house. Good thinking, friend.
You aim, I'll shoot. see what mess they'd made of the girl that they'd left behind. <laughs> Mr. Headbag and his new friend set sail. Silent with the deafening ringing of violence still heavy in the air. Forward they sailed, disappearing into the heavy fog. Was it morning? Was it night? Mr. Headbag was unable to determine. It had been so long since last he'd seen a proper sun. Mr. Headback found he was unable to control anything but the camera. Rachel, Mr. Headback said, seeing if his friend would respond. Jolene, he said, angling once more for a response. Sebastien, he ventured. Still no response. Eleanor, said timidly. Ellie? Try as he might. Nothing would get a response from his friend. Nothing but the impending, looming walls of what appeared to be an epic city. How many grown ups lived here, they wondered. How could this possibly be any safer than where they just left? And yet, what other options did they have? Sasha? Luna, perhaps. And yet nothing. His friend remained as silent as he did. Taking her hand, they stepped bravely onto the sand and into the new world that loomed before them. Emma, perhaps. Still no response. His new friend coughed. Is it something in the air? He wondered. Oh, something within her. Long sleeve clothing brought back horrid memories of a time long past. And a man named Mr. Snippy Clips. Shaking his head, 
Mr. Headbag tried another name. Kiddo, perhaps, or Sweetie. Maybe something as saccharine as candy or sugar pie. His new friend stared at him blankly. Perhaps something more dignified than a Vivian or a Victoria. Samantha? Still no response. More empty suits. Long, slender limbs. Where did all the people go? Mr. Headbag wondered. And why did they simply leave their clothes behind? a series of television sets, all broken and tied up as if part of some trap. A trap to catch what, he wondered. His eager friend boosted him up into the next room. Loath to leave his new friend for too long, Mr. Headbag made quick work of the impending puzzle. He heard his friend calling to him and yet could not see them. Thus, Mr. Headbag was no more. Is it Mr. Headbang? But he landed gracefully on the second floor all the same. Hoping his friend had the wherewithal to grab the proper string, push the team down, and just like that, the two were nearly reunited. Mercy, he said, part ways as thanks and part ways as a guess. The slightest flicker of a smile, but otherwise a miss. Like that, said Mr. Headbag.
we'll see what's the TV wanting nothing more than to turn it off. And yet when he touched it, it seemed to send him a message. A hallway that was calling to him. Understand this. Teleport into the television. As the headpack found himself in the image that it sent to him. A long, twisted corridor leading towards a door with a mysterious eyeball in it seemed familiar. It beckoned to him, and he moved to answer the call, but with every step he moved slower and slower until, finally, he was back in the room with his friend. The television turned off, and everything seemed back to normal. And with a frown, he remembered that normal was quite terrifying. Taking his friend's hand, they continued on. Idly, Mr. Headbag wondered if he could change the hat of his friend, and appeared he could not. on the door in his vision. A clue, perhaps, thought Mr. Headbag. or a memory from a life long lived before. Coughing when she was hungry. Coughing when she needed to eat. His eyeball again. Ever present. Ever watching. Come along, friend. Have a seat. I'll give you a push. Have you played swings before? You have a seat here, and then I will go on. Come along. It's <laughs> cold. She's playing on the crack. Uh, 
at the core of their mystery and their misery. They were still children, and they still liked to play. Backpacks. Was this a house for children? So it would seem, said the pictures on the walls. upon bunk beds. In the center of the room was a singular ominous ball. Go on, you take the ball, I'll take Little Brick. It was nice to see his friend reach for the toy as if to play, and yet, as soon as he dropped the ball, it seemed like all pretense of playing was over. Hey, thanks. Ooh, that was scary. Libby Girl donated a dollar and fifty, saying, and as the narrator continued onward within the game, a small donation appeared from the void as a way to say the narration is top notch. May the children hopefully survive together. May they survive together, indeed. Thank you very much, Libby Girl. A very, very merry thank you to you. Hoping he hadn't spoiled his new friend's sense of play. Mr. Headback grabbed the ball and exited the room. Curious what to do and where to go next. Oh. Get that out quite easily. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. They're in what appeared to be a punishment room of sorts. Mr. Headback continued down the narrow pathway, squeezing through vents and down crooked floorways. Was his friend's hand warmer than it had been before? 
No, it must be a trick of the mind. Down this build to what appeared to be an office. Some silhouette did nothing to ease their nerves. Oh, my Lord in heaven. Bottom lip, looking at his friend. Mischief was afoot. Children. Like them? What were these children? Oh. It appeared there was numerous children. They were trying to... Trying to what, exactly? Holding on to his friend's hand for comfort, Mr. Headback pushed forward. end. Or so he had worried. These children were full of murderous intent. But why? Surely they were children too. Why couldn't they be friends? children ran off with his new friend, and Mr. Headbag was quick to follow after, but not without proper armament. Confound them! As the headbag raced back to his arms. Oh, and was attacked by the first child and died.
Okay. We're gonna have to work on that timing. was not enough. They need all fall. Anyone who would keep him from his new friend. You there. Once more into the fray. Easily dispatching the first. Note of the board that triggered the trap. Triggered it and stepped to one side and let it dispatch of his foe. This way... Nope. Oh no! No, 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 no! Oh, I didn't like that whatsoever. Grab it, grab it, 
grab it. Okay, it's fine. Perfectly normal. None of these kids better fucking snitch. <laughs> Into the stomach you go. Hydration break. Oh my. That was quite scary. I gotta go in about 30 minutes. But I'm loving this game so far. Kid, you okay? You okay, kid? Oh. Don't make me do it. I'll do it. Told you don't make me do it. Ding dong.
I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Little Brick, unfortunately, was long gone. One of many sacrifices Mr. Headbag would make to ensure his own survival. Oh, good. Hello, said the teacher. Her long, giraffe-like extending neck, greasy and pulsating with every passing second. Mr. Baghead climbed, still in search of his friend. Where could they have taken her? Oh, hello, dear teacher, as the bank had exclaimed, sliding for his life. Okay, well... That's not the way to go about things. No! Jump, ass! What? What? Come on! Eliza Lynn donated 500 bits, exclaimed the narrator. Eliza Lynn said, I can't believe you did that on your first try. You're such a pro gamer. Indeed, Eliza Lynn was awarded with the uh, badge of honesty for their immense sense of truth and uh, kindness. Narrator wished Eliza Lynn a 
warm and friendly namaste for their kind words. What do you get? Think about this moment. key for that. Weird that these stairs were made for such little feet, but all right. yet. That's the scary way. <laughs> nom nom nom, said Mr. Headbag, consuming another television child. to get this, I just don't know how.
Just need one more. We need the queen's head. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that painting. Little scary girl. I already see it's gonna open up a door behind that bookcase. the dog do a PB. Come on, Mr. Duck. Mr. Baghead, elated at solving the chess puzzle, moved forward. Hoping to save his friend with expediency. Taking Mr. Duck with him for good luck, Mr. Baghead approached the locked door, eager to see his friend again, hoping he wasn't too late. Horrible sounds called to him from downstairs. He approached with trepidation. TV child. Mr. Headbag was eager to absorb him. Boop. Ha boop. 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 Give me that sausage. Said Mr. Headbag. Climbing the tray, he went to investigate what that noise was. Alas, Mr. Headbag's sense of depth perception wasn't what it used to be. Good, 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 good. Every time I think I can make friends, I am quickly and harshly reminded that I cannot.
Why? No wrong button. Ah, dang it. Keep forgetting which button does what. Climbing over. Sneaking along. He picked up a ladle. Smash the child. Stopped sneaking. Smash the other child. Missed horribly. Oh, come on. Okay, I think I need to... When they stop, I need to take, like, one more step and then swing. Braghead felt like a genius. Why well, he could simply disguise himself as one of them. They would never see it coming. Look at all these naughty, naughty children. Capable of behaving. What a bunch of turds, thought Mr. Baghead. Surrounded by these naughty, naughty, horrible children. Oh, good. Oh, the sounds, the sounds they made. Look at that lonely one. What horrible monsters these children are. Stop that! Leave her alone! Idiot children. Hey! 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 What a bunch of turds these children were. Absolute turds. And he was right. Every last one of them. A fresher turd than the next. Mr. Baghead was relieved to be back to his normal self. Even pretending to be like them was... too much. Before he pressed the button, he climbed the shelves, curious to see what was on top of them.
brains. Oh, of course. Simple, simple, simple. Yes, add the potato into the bug. Close the jar. Unfortunately, my friends, I fear this is... This must be where we cut ourselves off for the day. What better place than a place so... Tense and scary. We shall return, perhaps tomorrow, with more of this. But for now, I must bid you good night. Say thank you for all of your donations. Your watching, your subs all your love and generosity and all of your hype and for putting up with this horrendous accent for the entirety of the stream. A big thank you, of course, to Sanjo's World for swinging by, to Motion Daniel for being a mod, and to Bamsnix as well for being a mod. You just have thanks to my mod team, without which I would not be able to do this. I wish thee the most wonderful of evenings, and to all of you I say... Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night.